I'm gonna draw the hour. You remember me, right? Tigatron is a character from Beast Wars, one of my favorite shows growing up. And if my gradually degrading memory serves me right, there was an episode caught before the storm where Tigatron was tasked with hacking into the Predacon database, leaking all of Megatron's sensitive information. Well, if Megatron had Surfshark Alert, that wouldn't have happened, and the show would have ended. Duh. Surfshark Alert is gonna scan the web to check if your sensitive information, like your email, your credit card numbers, your passwords, have been the unfortunate victim of a data breach, which is more more possible than you think. And if it finds that your information has been compromised, Surfshark Alert will alert you so you can take action like changing your email, your passwords, or noping out of the compromised website altogether. Check out the link in the description and use my promo code JOBBYTHEHONG to get 75% off a one-year plan, three extra months free, and a completely free subscription to Surfshark VPN. And if for some reason you don't like the idea of knowing when you're getting fucked, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get Surfshark Alert and secure your digital life today. <laughs> yeah, I did what you asked. That was good, right? Okay. I love you too. Tigatron was never my favorite character, that honor would go to old Chopperface, but I always did really like him. Although a strong soldier, he would much rather spend his time wandering the landscapes of prehistoric Earth and mingling with the local wildlife. There's a reason why he prefers being in beast mode. <laughs> hey! And I guess Takara Tomi prefers his beast mode as well, because this tiger is excellent to a surprising degree. Usually when it comes to Transformers beast modes, I would strongly advise against looking at their belly. Only pain and suffering awaits you, but not in in this case, Takara went the extra mile and panelled up all that robot mode bullshit, resulting in an aesthetically pleasing and rubbable belly. The panels can be a bit fiddly though, and it does compromise the aesthetics of the robot mode. We'll get to that when we get to that. I gotta say that so far, this is the best beast mode in this Transformers Masterpiece Beast Wars subline. Second only to Megatron. And hey, if you're not one of the over 1 million people who've seen that video, thank you by the way, go check that out. Sure. Features David K. Nice shirt. Link in the description. Also, if you wanted to buy this figure at any point, there's a store link in the description. Also, if you wanted an inkling of an idea of where I've been for the past two months, I recently did a Q&A stream on Jobby too. Don't forget to subscribe. I plan to stream there every week. Link in the description. Also, nah, that's it. The tiger mode is show accurate, and the head sculpt is really well done. Super expressive. You could just hear the voice of Blue Man Kuma coming out of it. Don't hold your breath. Blue Man Kuma doesn't have a social media where I can harass him into a cameo. But Gary Chalk does. Sir, you do not know what you're getting yourself into. I'll bother you later. Our worlds are in danger. Bendy whiskers that won't get messed up by the transformation cheetor. And if you scalp him real quick, you could see all of his sinful thoughts. <laughs> you can move his eyeballs. Excellent idea, but they're a little more loose than I think Takara would have liked. It's a bit of a bitch to get him to look straight, which he's not in the Japanese <laughs> dub. Air Razor's a dude. <laughs> Hopefully we get a masterpiece Air Razor to go along with this guy. Would have been better if the eyeballs were were a bit tighter, and for Takara to include some kind of eye tool to move them around. But as he is now, you could be messing with his gaping hole, and his eyes will go cross, just like in real life. Speaking of that gaping hole, Primus help me. Now a fucked up ass is nothing new for these Masterpiece Beast Wars toys, but this particular example gets me because the majority of this tiger mode was almost perfect. You can say Takara half-assed it. It's good to be back. And it's not just aesthetically disgusting, the articulation here is not as good as the front half. These in and out joints, while I usually don't mind an extra bit of posability, they'll really frick us over in the robot mode. We'll get to it when we get to it. The only thing I can tolerate about the butthole is the tail. Just like in real life. Who put that there? Don't, don't make that edit, what the fuck? A fairly simple system of hinge joints and swivels. But if you bend it just right, you could get some nice and natural tail poses. And that front half is as bendy as it could have been. Wish they would have done more with the head, though. For even more display options, you get a stand adapter. Plugs right into a not included stand. This is the one that's included with Black Arachnium. He's also compatible with Dinobot stand, but I'm not gonna get into that. Storage is kind of a nightmare.
If you want to know what's going on with my new setup, let me know. So that's the only accessory relevant to the beast mode. There's a ton more for the robot mode, which is depicted in this included card. So that's on the back. Looks great alongside all the other masterpiece beast modes, which I will not film unless you want me to take another two months transforming all of these guys. So here's a picture I found on Google. And for anyone who thought this was a mere retool of masterpiece Cheetor, just look at the size of this thing. You were wrong. Accept it. Now, excuse me while I take the time to transform this guy, which will not take two months. And for that, we need these instructions, which is a stupidly large fold-out. With the amount of money you're paying, you'd think Takara could invest in some fucking booklets. And here we have no neck. Oh, the robot mode looks fantastic. Super faithful to a CG model in the show. Low res textures and not completely circular circles. Proportionally, he's wonky, but faithful. And he looks fairly good from all angles. Not perfect, he is a bit panelly in the arms and the back. Far from the worst Transformers masterpiece back that I've seen, and that is not a sentence I like to say. Masterpiece more like master shit. Masterpiece more like Primus, help me. Head sculpt is excellent. You could just hear the voice of get new material jobby. Features impressive light piping, which you could see a lot more clearly when you rip off his face. I'd say his head's actually big enough to fit a Megatron style LED in there. Takara really skimped out on us, didn't they? But we're not skimping out on them. You get four red-eyed faces in total with varying degrees of distress. Watching your girl get forcibly tentacled and a neutral face with blue eyes. Combine that with this included wire and this included Megatron head. And it's a recreation of his hacking from before the storm. The Megatron head is not compatible with the actual Megatron, but it acts as a sort of Rubik's Cube, because in the show, that's how you hack into the Predacon mainframe. Don't you just love Hollywood hacking? We got you down, you son of a bitch. But if Megatron had surf Alert, with a hacking wire doesn't plug into anything, if you're a coward, but the gut gun can plug into his hand. Can plug into his hand, which does feature a trigger finger, at least on the right hand. Either this was intentional design or the paint on the left hand fused the fingers together. Way to go. And a wrist rocket that sucks. Absolute pinnacle of a display piece. This guy belongs on a shelf with your other masterpiece Beast Wars figures, but the play value is... Uh, articulation's not bad. Pretty standard for a masterpiece figure, even including an ab crunch that's uselessly loose. Hey! Hey guys, editing jobby here, and I'm totally not procrastinating. It took me a whole week after filming this toy review to figure out that this guy actually features a proper son of a bitch. Ugh. Ratcheted ab crunch. It's super tight and super easy to miss. 
So thanks to TF Wiki for sparing me from an avalanche of butt jobbies. <laughs> that first app crunch still sucks though. And for the most part, the joints are smooth and solid, able to hold basic poses. But then you realize these arm panels don't snap in, the wrists are stupid loose, and that this is the only pair of ratchet joints on the whole figure. A bit arbitrary, don't you think? Beautiful friend. The knees needed some more reinforcement here. You remember that in and out joint from the tiger mode? It don't lock in. So now you got a useless micro knee that only serves to destabilize the figure. Wouldn't mind it so much if it wasn't loose. And the actual knee joint itself is not tight either. What kind of knees are these? Chinese? Gets banned in China. This video was supposed to come out a long time ago, okay? And the calf joint necessary for the transformation, but doesn't even lock in in the what? At least the joints on the feet are solid. Now we know what Takara's priorities are. Furry feet. Fucking dumb. But perhaps I have a solution to this issue. I recently purchased a vial of a questionably white liquid from a fellow toy man, D-Star. Dr. D-Star's Fixer Elixir Joint Compound. Supposed to tighten up loose figure joints. Not an endorsement until I test them out on these knees. I'll get back to you on that later. So if you want to be extra sure that your Tigatron doesn't tip over from your precariously hanging shelf, plug them into the stand, no adapter required. If you're down in this rabbit hole like I am, I recommend picking this guy up. He looks great. Both modes look amazing, but both modes also feel half baked. So it's good to be back. I'll see more of you soon. Very soon if I don't have another depressive episode. I love you, bitch. The hell are you still doing here? Another Optimus Prime? Who would have guessed? This one can suck his own dick.